Hello students, I am Miss Dea E. L. Mundo and today we will be discussing Grade 10 Science, Quarter 2, Week 9, entitled Nature's Twin Forces. In this lesson, we will be discussing electromagnetic induction, motors, and generators. Our most essential learning competency is to explain the operation of a simple electric motor and generator. Are you ready? Before we start, let's have a short review of very important concepts that you have discussed in the previous years about electricity. Okay, I want you to rearrange the letters to find out the mystery word. So for our first sentence, objects become charged when blank are transferred from or onto it. What is the mystery word? If you answered electrons, then you are correct. How about this one? Like charges blank each other. Okay, so I have seen that some of you have answered repel and repel is correct. Third question. The charges flow in a simple electric blank. What is the mystery word? Okay, very good. So the answer is circuit. Fourth question. Ohm's law shows the relationship between blank, voltage, and resistance. What is the mystery word? If your answer is current, then you got it right. And for our last statement, Blank is generated in power plants and transmitted from power stations into your homes. Okay, what is your answer? Electricity is correct. If you got 4 over 5 or 5 over 5, somehow you were able to Remember very important concepts that we will be discussing today. So, without further ado, let's go to our lesson. First, I want to ask, which of the following appliances do you have at home? Do you have a television? Okay. Do you have speakers? How about a blender? A cell phone? Hmm, very important yan sa ating online classes. How about an electric fan? An electric guitar? A radio or a microphone if you have at least one of these materials or appliances that you can see on your screen then it means that you are enjoying the fruits of electromagnetism and electromagnetic induction and we will be discussing them in a few minutes all right now, what is electromagnetism and electromagnetic induction? 
So before we go to their definitions, let's relate first the two terms where this word came from. So we have the electro and we have the magnetism. When you were in grade 8, you discussed the concept of electric fields. And as we all know, electric fields are imaginary lines of force that emanate from a charge. So makikita natin sa ating screen, we have a proton, a positive charge, and an electron, which is a negative charge. And it's very obvious that the difference between the electric fields of the two types of charges would be the direction. So for a positive charge, you can see the electric field lines to be going out of the proton, whereas for the electron, you will see that the electric fields are going into the electron. Okay, so you also discussed in grade 8 that this electric field causes the charges to interact with each other. So what kinds of interactions happen? So whenever you have a positive charge interacting with another positive charge, the tendency is for them to repel. So we have already uh, mentioned this term a while ago in our recall. The same thing happens when you have two negative charges or two electrons. Okay, pag sinabi nating repel, maghihiwalay sila. And whenever you have a proton or a positive charge, and an electron or a negative charge, what happens is that they are attracted to each other. Sabi nga sa law of electric charges, whenever you have like charges, they repel. And whenever you have unlike charges, they attract. Similarly, for magnets, we have almost the same rules. But then we don't have positive and negative charges. We have north and south poles. Just like what you can see here. There are also magnetic field lines surrounding these magnets on their poles. Kasi the magnets would always have a north and a south pole. And as you can see, the magnetic field lines are coming out from the north pole going to the south pole. Now, why are we emphasizing these concepts? It's because um, millions of years ago or long, long time ago, people treat electricity and magnetism as separate fields. Inisip nila walang kinalaman si electricity kay magnetism, si magnetism walang kinalaman kay electricity. Not until there are scientists who discovered na meron pala, meron palang relationship yung dalawa. So sino tong dalawang scientist na to na kailangan nating tandaan? So first we have Hans Christian Orsted. So, this scientist was already discussed to you when we have started um, discussing about electromagnetic waves. And this is Hans Christian Orsted. And what he discovered is that a current carrying wire produces a magnetic field. So, this was in 1820. He was delivering a lecture to his class. And then he has a circuit there. He brought with him a circuit. And then he also has a compass. So what happened is that when he turned on the switch of his circuit, he noticed that the compass had a deflection. So from there, he discovered that electricity could produce magnetism. And that concept is what we call electromagnetism. From the term electromagnetism, we can get the word electromagnet. Now, what is an electromagnet? An electromagnet is a coil of wire that uses an electric current to produce a magnetic field. Okay, so how does an electromagnet look like? Okay, so this is the simplest electromagnet that you can do. You can do this at home. You just have an iron nail and then you have wire and then you connect that to a battery you can already do a simple electromagnet and then you also have heavy duty electromagnets like this you have more coils of wire and then heavier metals now we also have michael faraday who years later 11 years discovered that electric current is generated in an electric conductor by moving or changing the magnetic field surrounding it. So if 
A while ago, I discussed that Hans Christian Orsted discovered that electricity could produce magnetism. What Michael Faraday discovered was the inverse of this. Okay, he discovered that you can generate electricity by changing the magnetic field around it. Okay, now why is this important? It's because Michael Faraday was able to discover another way of producing electricity. And as we all know, electricity is important. Okay, so tayo, gumagamit tayo ng coal. Uh, nagsusunog ng coal ang mga industries to give us electricity. And there are also other sources of electricity. And then this is another way of producing electricity. So this concept is what we call electromagnetic induction. So again, I will be emphasizing that what Hans Christian Orsted discovered is electromagnetism. It is that electricity can produce the magnetism. Michael Faraday discovered the concept of electromagnetic induction wherein magnetism can produce electricity. So, baligtad yung kanilang na-discover. And right now, we will be trying to simulate what Faraday have discovered. So, we call this the Faraday's lab. So, we have this setup that you will be seeing in a few minutes. We will be trying to understand what factors affect the voltage reading here on top. So, you have the voltmeter on top and then you have a coil of wire and then you also have a lamp and you also have a magnet. So, let's go now to our simulation. Okay, so there you go. This is our simulation. Um, before we start, I would like to give credits to fet.colorado.edu for the wonderful simulations that we are using in our science classes. Right now, you are seeing the Faraday's Law Lab wherein we will try to identify the factors affecting the amount of voltage that you will be seeing on your screen in this voltmeter. So you have here a lamp as well and then you have your springs or you have your coils of wire that are connected to our voltmeter. As you can see, on top we have coil of wire which has fewer rounds compared to that below. So, mas maraming rounds yung nasa baba. We also have a magnet here that you can switch the poles. So, let's see later what happens or what is the effect of switching the poles and moving this into the coils of wire. Okay, so first, let's try to not to do something, okay? I will be using the coils of wire with more rounds for now. Ayan. So what do you notice about the needle of the voltmeter when I am not doing something? Okay, obviously, it is not moving. So it is like at the zero mark, okay? Now, what happens if I try to put this magnet inside the coil of wire? What do you think will happen to our pointer? Okay, it will move, but where will it move? Will it move to the negative side or the positive side? Positive side. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. If I move the magnet with the north pole first, what happens is that Okay, you observe the movement of the voltmeter. Okay, as you can see, what happens is that the pointer of the voltmeter moves to the negative side. Okay, and if I pull it out, it moves to the positive side. Now, what happens when I try to move it 
faster. Okay, I hope that you can take note of your observations because uh, this will be asked from you in our module. Now, let's try to make the magnet reversed. So, we will be inserting the south pole first and then observe what happens. Okay. So, if I move it slowly, this is what happens. And if I move it fast, this is what happens. Again, please also observe the lamp because uh, you will be recording these observations in your module. Alright, so next let's try to compare the deflections when you are placing your magnet inside the first one. The first coil, the one with less number of coils, and the one with the greater number of coils. Dito muna tayo sa mas onte. Okay, and then compare it with this one. Okay, and then I'll try to rotate the magnet again so you can have more observations. Alright, so I hope you have written a lot of observations that will help you answer the module later. Now, the next question is, what do you think are the factors affecting the amount of voltage that you can see on the voltmeter? Does the number of coils affect the voltage? The answer is yes. Now, what other factors affect the amount of voltage registered in the voltmeter? Alright, the manner that you placed or inserted your magnet inside the coil of wire also affects the amount of voltage. Okay, let's go back to my PowerPoint. Now, to summarize the concepts that we have learned from the simulation, let me present to you Faraday's Law. Okay, medyo... Nakakatakot lang yung formula nito, pero ito lang yung ibig sabihin ng equation na yan. The equation means that the induced voltage in a coil is proportional to the product of the number of loops and the rate at which the magnetic field changes within those loops. So if we relate this to our simulation a while ago, you can see that the number of loops affect the induced voltage. So the more number of loops that you have in your electromagnet, let's say for that example, the greater the induced voltage will be. Also, if you move your magnet inside your loops faster, the induced voltage would also be greater compared to when you are not moving the magnet or you are moving it at a slower pace okay, because we are talking about the change in magnetic field in those loops so yan lang po yung ibig sabihin ni faraday's law let's go now to the applications of electromagnets and electromagnetic induction let's start with electric motors because we have two applications the first one is electric motors and what is an electric motor an electric motor is a device that converts electrical energy into mechanical energy 
So for the boys, yung mga nakapagbuting na ng kanilang mga electric fan, merong electric motor sa likod ng electric fan. Pero I'm not advising you to open your electric fans just for you to see an electric motor. I will show you pictures. So ito yung itsura ng isang electric motor. Okay? So let's discuss an electric motor in detail. This is a simplified diagram of an electric motor. Okay, so you can see here very important parts that we will be defining later. So, ayan. The first one, sabi nga natin, tandaan po natin na an electric motor converts electricity into mechanical energy. So, the input would be electricity, the output would be movement or mechanical energy. So, therefore, it's best to start with the power source. So, the power source could be a simple battery or it can be our AC supply, yung mga sinasaksakan natin, just like our appliances. Of course, yan nga yung sinabi natin, the power source could come from the battery or an electrical outlet. This one, Okay, may makikita kayong color gold dyan na parang dalawa na pinaghati. We call that the commutator. It is a metal ring divided into two separate halves and attached to the coiled wire. So, ano ang ginagawa ni commutator? Kinokontrol niya yung movement every half turn. Mamaya i-discuss ko kung ano yung half turn na yun. We also have the armature. So, this is where the electricity passes after leaving the commutator. And then, the armature is surrounded by magnets, which supplies the magnetic field to keep the armature rotating as electricity passes through it. Ano bang itsura ng electric motor kapag gumagalaw? So, ganyan siya. As long as there is electricity that is being supplied to the appliance, then the electric motor will move. Like for example, so sabi nga natin kanina, uh, we can use the example of um, the electric fan. The electric fan has an electric motor in it. The moment na sinaksak natin yung electric fan, inon natin yan, magkakaroon na yan ng power sa loob and that electricity would rotate the armature. Okay? And then, what happens is that once it rotates, connected dyan yung blades ng ating electric fan. Kaya umiikot din yung blades ng electric fan. So, ibig sabihin, from electrical energy ang nangyayari, nakoconvert siya sa movement, which is yung pag-ikot ng blades. On the left side of your screen, you can see the forces, the variables that are in play in our electric motor. So, makikita natin ang daming arrows. Ma'am, ano po yan? It's quite complicated to discuss it now, but then in higher physics, uh, we have what we call hand rules to discuss the directions of this variable. So, for example, we have here the force, we have the current, and we also have the magnetic field. Remember, for a magnet, the magnetic field is always directed from the north to the south. So, for example, in this picture, we have the north on the right and we have the south on the left. So, therefore, the arrows of the magnetic fields should be directed from right to left. Okay? Now, for the case of motors, we will be using what we call the Fleming's left-hand rule. So, you will be using your... This is your left hand, index finger, then your middle finger, and your thumb. So, how do we use the left hand rule to identify the directions of a different variables? Your index finger should point to the direction of magnetic field. Okay, I'm following the image on the screen. So, that would be from north to south. All right. And then, your middle finger should point to your current. Okay, yan yan, current. And then, your thumb should normally point to the direction of the force. So, therefore, at this part, since si magnetic field, pag ganyan naman talaga siya, and then si current ay papasok 
then si force ay papunta sa taas. Ibig sabihin, itong part ng armature na to ay magro-rotate pa ganyan. Clockwise. And then, on the right side naman, okay, still we have the magnetic field, okay, towards the left. And then, the current is going outwards, going to me. Okay. Medyo nababaligtad na natin. And then, the force would be downwards. So, that means that the force here, okay, should push the armature towards this direction. Clockwise. Okay, of course, the movement would differ when you place the north pole on the left and you place the south pole on the right because uh, your index finger would be pointing in a different direction. So, medyo complicated siya. But then, in higher physics, th that is what we use to identify the directions of the forces. Okay, so... Let's discuss what exactly happens inside an electric motor. How do electric motors work? First, there should be electricity kasi nga input is electricity. Electricity passes from the power source to your commutator. Again, the commutator, ito yung parang dalawang half rings na hati. And then, the electric current flows to the armature because the armature is connected to your commutator. And the armature is surrounded or is the one surrounded by magnets. Once the electric current flows into the armature, it interacts with the magnetic field that is already in here. So what happens is that the armature rotates. It rotates because of the force that is produced or caused by the different variables that are in play. You have the magnetic field, you have the current then you will be having a force here. So this force would cause a turning force or turning effect into your armature. Yan yung pinapakita natin kanina na upward at saka downward force. Kaya magro-rotate siya. And then, the commutator would reverse the electric current each half rotation to keep the turning force in the same direction. And the process is repeated many times. Kasi um, the turning force, hindi naman siya pwedeng iikot ng ganyan tapos babalik. Kailangan tuloy-tuloy. Di ba wala ka naman nakita siguro na electric fan na iikot ng paganyan tapos babalik tapos ganyan. Laging pag isang ano lang, direction. So to keep that happening, the commutator does its role of reversing the electric current every half rotation para tuloy-tuloy lang yung movement ng armature. Okay, so that's it for an electric motor. Any questions? Okay, so before we proceed to our next part, I would like to stress out that electric motors are applications of electromagnetism. Why? Because we have electricity as our input and magnetism as a result of electricity. So our next application would be the reverse of an electric motor. It is an electric generator. So, kung kanina si electric motor, it converts um, electrical energy into mechanical energy, electric generators would convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. So, maraming iba't ibang klase ng generators. So, these are some generators that use gasoline. Okay, then these are some heavy-duty generators. Now, since the generator would be like a motor that is working in reverse, then the parts would almost be the same. You still have a magnet, you still have the armature, you still have the rings, you still have the circuit load, but then instead of us having electricity as our input, electricity will now be our output. And if in electric motors, we have used the Fleming's left-hand rule, um, in electric generators, we will be using Fleming's right-hand rule. Similarly, our right index finger would point to the direction of magnetic field. Your middle finger would be the direction of current and the force would be the thumb. 
So, in our picture, our magnetic field would be from north to south. Okay, north to south lagi. So, we point our index finger there. And then, our current would be inwards for this case. I'm talking about this part. Okay, this is our magnetic field again. And then, this is our um, current. And then, this would be our force. That's why you have an upward arrow on the left side beside north and then for this side naman the same thing will happen pero downward siya why kasi uh, we point our index finger towards south again and then our middle finger would be outwards kasi itong arrow na to outwards so papunta dito sa akin and then your thumb would naturally go down so, that would be the direction of the force. So, the armature would rotate clockwise in this example. Again, you still have almost the same parts. You have the armature and then you have the magnets. Okay, so that's all for generators. Any questions? So, if there are no more questions, then let's go to our activity to sum up everything. So, I have here a Venn diagram wherein you will be classifying all the terms that you can see on the screen. So, itong space ito sa gitna, it belongs to the terms that are similar or the same for the electric motor and the electric generator. So, I will be giving you 3 minutes to finish this activity and then... Uh, we will compare afterward. So, I will turn off my video for now para makita nyo yung tinatakpan ng picture ko. And then, your 3 minutes will start now. Alright, so are you done? Okay, let's now compare our answers. Okay, so this is my answer. For electric motor, you have electric fan, electrical to mechanical, electromagnetism, and uses electricity. For electric generator naman, we have produces electricity, mechanical to electrical, wind turbine, electromagnetic induction. And for both, we have magnets and energy transformation so did you get all 10 terms or phrases correct if yes then you are now ready for our short quiz so please get a small piece of paper where you can write your answers you can just write the letters of the correct answers so first question which of the following best describes electromagnetism a magnet that is produced by electric current. A coil of wire that uses current to produce a magnetic field. A phenomenon in which a current carrying wire produces a magnetic field. Or D, a phenomenon in which electricity is produced by changing the magnetic field. Question number two. Which of the following may affect the amount of induced electricity? The number of wire loops. Letter B, the rate at which magnetic field changes. Letter C, both A and B. Or letter D, neither A nor B. Question number three. What energy transformation takes place in an electric generator? Alin kaya dyan? Question number four. 
Which of these devices converts electrical energy into mechanical energy? Is it letter A, electric motor? Letter B, electromagnet? Letter C, commutator? Or letter D, electric generator? What do you think? Electrical energy into mechanical energy. And last question. Which statement is true about an electric motor and an electric generator? So let me close my video first. So you can see the choices. Okay, I think you are done. Let's check your answers. So, number one, the answer is letter C. Number two, the answer is also letter C. Number three, the answer is letter C. Number four, the answer is letter A. And number five, the answer is letter D. Okay, who got a perfect score? Five over five. Four over five. Three over five. Two and below. Okay, I'm happy that most of you got a high score for this quiz. So that's all for today. Thank you very much for participating well in our discussion. I hope you have learned a lot. So this is me again. I am Miss Dea El Mundo and see you in my next lesson. Bye!